Hello, I'm Ashley, the engineer at Andover Norton. And one of the technical questions we get often asked is what's this bike, this piece on my bike? Um, it's invariably the electronics and the electrical pieces that uh, are fitted to the bike. Some are new, some are old. What I've done here is laid out the best I can some of the older parts alongside some of the other parts that are more modern and even more modern than some of the parts that, that we still sell. Now, there are people that do get confused with uh, the various electrical parts, especially when it's on a, a bike that's been bought in from the States and it's been left standing 20, 30 years, or it's a, from a deceased estate and they've bought it at auction. Now, some of these parts, you easily identify yourselves. You'd know what they are straight away, but some of them are rarely seen these days. But it doesn't mean to say they're still not being used. Some people out there are still using them quite happily. Now, over on this side, we've got the actual stator and the rotor. This bit generates the AC for your motorcycle. Now, the motorcycle runs on DC, so we now need to convert that AC voltage to a DC voltage. In the old days, they used to use one of these, a rectifier. Now, that rectifies the AC into DC. Problem is, the more you rev the engine, the more DC this would produce. Not a good thing, because your battery's looking for a, somewhere in the region of 12.6 to about 14.4 volts to at least stay charged. So what they then decided was, they'd fit a Zener diode. Now the Zener diode, clever little bit of kit, it's, there's a lot out there still working, but a lot of people have removed them. It's an obsolete item now, but what it does at a certain voltage DC, it will go short circuit and peg the DC voltage. It does that by dumping some of the power as heat into your right hand Z plate. On the Mark III, you'll have two of these and a slightly different rectifier, but they look identical to what you're looking at on the table. So you can't really mistake them. Now, this piece here, being obsolete, was replaced by this little piece here, about the size of a postage stamp. Still sell them, people still use them. They use this piece in conjunction with the Zener diode. And this again is just a rectifier. There's no regulation from that part. Now, once you've got your voltage, your DC voltage, and it's all nice and stable, your battery's going to thank you for it, because it's now going to say, right, I'm happy with that, I can stay charged. Now, your battery, you may see different variations of these. Some are smaller, lithium batteries. Some have the actual vent pipe on the battery. Ideally, try and, if you're gonna purchase a new battery, try, try and get one without a vent pipe so you're not putting the vapor from the battery down across your rear chain guard, rear chain, rear wheel, etc. So, try and get a more modern battery without a vent pipe if you can. Now, this old system that we used to use can be replaced in some of the components by using the modern rectifier regulators. We can actually see the difference in size of some of these. But we get close-ups so you can see them. But effectively we've got the Podtronics version, which is single face, and the TriSpark, which is three face. But it'll also do single face you just use any two of the yellow wires, dead easy. This is a MOSFET, more modern technology than this one. And this one here will hold the voltage at about 14.3 volts with a good tick over. So a pretty good bit of kit really. And this one will keep your battery charged. We still sell them, it's cheaper than the TriSpark. A lot of people still use it. And realistically, I don't even remember the last time we ever had one of these or one of these returned. It's modern electronics, fit and forget, does the job. Now, coming back to the battery, one of the questions we get is my bike positive earth or negative earth? The Nortons were made positive earth. Bit of a misnomer, it's a, it's a, a term coined over from the electronics and electrical industry. Some people call it frame or you might see it written in some foreign or continental books as massa. Realistically, positive goes to the frame. And that's how you can check to see what, what system you've got. There are some bikes out there that have people converted to negative 
earth or where the negative goes to the frame. You need to know that configuration before you start fitting the modern components or even the older component there because you if you get it around the wrong way you can fry some of the components and destroy them. Now moving on another bit that gets often confused is the blue thingy the capacitor yeah now strangely the one that gets this, this gets confused with is the old style original the warning light simulator on there it also gets confused with and i can see where there's some people come from indicator relay indicator relay because i believe some of the old lucas type indicator relays were also in a can but i think they were predominantly fitted to cars so you know, it's it's easy to get some of this confused this is the more modern replacement of the old blue thingy capacitor as we call it it's got the two wires coming out of it interchangeable but obviously you can see this one's slightly bigger so you'd need to put something in there to make sure this doesn't rattle around and destroy itself in the spring we're in use the next thing that we uh, get confusion with is indicator relay this is the lucas indicator relay and you can see where it can sometimes get confused usually when people have got the second sort of style generation of rectifier fitted the thing is, some bikes you might find these mounted in the headlights, sometimes you might find them mounted in the gusset plate on the bike. Other bikes could be fitted anywhere if someone's decided they wanted to fit it anywhere else on the bike. Now moving along, the next thing, and this is a recent one, is the condensers and the ballast resistor. There are still people out there using points, so they will still have the condenser and a ballast resistor. Now, the condensers live in this rubber little cap here. I can actually prise that off. And you can see the two condensers in there. We still sell something similar like that that will fit inside your existing rubber cover. So we can still do it. The ballast resistor, that just sits in there. We, we, can't, we sell an alternative now, which looks somewhat different. But either way, when your bike's been running, do not put your fingers up underneath your... Uh, coil clamp area because if you touch that ballast resistor it melts skin it gets really hot I know because I've done it now something else we get confusion with is actually the, the warning light assimilator modules this is a modern type one that's the old tar style one in the can slightly different slightly different size both do the same thing one does it electronically and the other does it mechanically. Now, the other one you may see is off a of Mark III. You may see something like this, which is from a Mark III. Two versions, a UK and Europe version, and then one for Canada, where they decided they want to run with headlights on all the time. But uh, they look identical. This is a replacement one. The originals are slightly smaller, slightly narrower, but they look visually similar. Now, if you want to do away with either of these items, then you can go over to a battery status monitor, tiny little thing like that, that would take away these two items. The beauty of this system tells you what's happening at the battery, whereas these two items tell you your alternator rotors going round and round, and that's about as far as it goes. They don't really tell you much else. If you come to do an upgrade, Battery status monitor is always worth doing. It does away with these two parts. Now, that's a brief overview of the items and how they relate and work together. The one thing we see quite often in the workshop is the rotor problem. The steel center coming loose. So if you're getting any problems with misfiring or unable to set the bike up, you set it up, start it, Stop it, go to set it, and it, it won't start, it spits and pops. Consider that if you've got an original Lucas rotor, it could be the steel insert that's loose. One of the things we've done here in the workshop is take it off, try to move the steel center in relation to the magnetic part, and it doesn't move. It's only when you can physically put that on the crank and go like that with it, you notice that the steel center is loose on the, on the magnets. So always worth bearing in mind, 
just because it doesn't do it in your hand doesn't mean it doesn't do it when it's on the crank. You can easily check it on the crank. Now, if there's any other questions or, or any other queries about any of the parts on the table, please feel free to get in touch and we'll try and answer them the best we can. Hopefully, that gives you a better understanding of what the different electrical parts look like that you may see on uh, Norton you've recently bought or an old one that's been left standing for a good many years. Thank you very much.